Hi everyone, so video two on binomial distribution. So in the first video we did a spinner example and we <clears throat> built the binomial formula from scratch. Uh, so remember you had uh, five spins and you wanted to know the probability of getting uh, you know, red <clears throat> and um, you know, we built a distribution table and that distribution table should add up to one. So the formula, remember if we're saying x is distributed binomially with np, so n is your number of trials, okay, so number in the sample, and p is your probability of success. So really success just means the thing you're looking for. So if you have this, then the probability of finding um, finding the number that you're after, so how many successes you're after, right, it's going to be n choose r, <clears throat> uh, by the way, that can be written like a vector, n r like so, okay, so n choose r, <clears throat> p to the power of r, 1 minus p to the power of n take away r, okay, so remember what we said, this top thing here, this should equal n, so n minus r plus r does equal n. And remember this r here, this goes on the top here as well. So I did show you in the previous video uh, how to, <coughs> I'll just take away those, uh, how to use your calculator to do something, uh, to find one of these probabilities. But it is really helpful to know where it comes from by hand. Okay, <coughs> so I'd like you to take your class with calculator with you now you're about to use it, all right, so get that ready. And remember, this is only for discrete data, which means x is a discrete, is a discrete random variable, okay? So random variable. It can only, because remember, x means like the number of successes. So you can't have half of a success, can you? Or minus four successes, right? I guess you could have minus four successes, but you can't, uh, no, nah, you can't have minus four successes. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what was I saying? Of course you can't. Okay, so x is a discrete random variable, which means it must take numbers starting from naught successes, one success, two, all the way up to however many n is, okay? But and remember, there are conditions on <coughs> this stuff uh, to tell you whether you, you can use this binomial expansion or not. So remember, there are four of them. The first one is that the probability of success, so probability p, is always the same. Okay, so it's constant. The second one was that all the events were independent. Okay, so it doesn't matter if the previous event, this happened, that shouldn't affect the probability of this next event happening. Okay. Remember, there was either a success or failure, so there has to be only two options, success or failure. Uh, and probability of is constant, independent events, success or failure. And what was the fourth one? Oh yeah, finite n. So finite n. You can't have an infinite number of trials, because otherwise, you know, how can we, how can we work with that? Okay, so let's say we had x is distributed binomially with n is 10 and 0.3 is the probability of success. So probability of x equals 0.5. Can we do that? Try doing that in your calculator. Try using the formula. So 10c 0.5 p is 0.3 to the power of 0.5 times by 0.7 to the power of 9.5, right? Because remember, this total needs to equal 10, okay? Put that in your calculator, and you'll get a maths error. It won't work, because 0.5 is not an integer, right? You can't have 0.5 ways of choosing something. It doesn't work, okay? So this will not work. Rather, if we had probability of x equals, let's say, 5, right? We know we can do 10, 10 choose 5, 0 0.3 to the power of 5, 0 0.7 to the power of 5, right? Or, and let's just quickly calculate that, right? So, uh, number 1, 
10 choose 5, you should do that 2.3 is the power of 5 times 0.7 to the power of 5. Okay, so that's 0 0.1029, all right? Whereas we could also, the alternative way, do it in our calculator. So remember, you're going to press menu, okay? You're then going to press 7 for stats. You're going to press 4 for the what's called binomial PD. And remember, binomial PD, so that's binomial PD, will tell you whether you get x equals, right? Then you're going to hit 2 for variable, all right? And there you go. You should have this binomial PD menu, <coughs> um, binomial PD menu that we saw in the previous slides. So it looks like this one here. Right? Looks a bit like that, but instead of CD, it says PD. Okay. So <coughs> remember, for this situation, if we've got x is binomial 10.3, and I'd like to know x equals 5. You're just going to type in for x, 5, that's the one you're trying to find. n is the number, 10, and 0.3 is your success. And you should get exactly the same thing. So if I do it, and if you do it at the same time, I do get 0.1029. Fantastic. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to deal with uh, this next bit of work. So what happens if we have p going between 1 and 5? So... If I rub this one out, <clears throat> I'm looking at this second one here, okay? Now, just from our DRV work, our normal uh, uh, discrete random variable work, I've seen some of you do it in class. You're just literally recognizing that this starts from, remember, x is bigger than 1, so this is 2, 3, 4, and 5, isn't it? Okay? So you could look at this like the probability... Uh, of 2 plus probability of 3 plus probability of 4 plus the probability of 5, right? <clears throat> Which is quite a long way of doing it, but that is how you could do it. So in your calculator, you could add them, add them, add them, add them. All right? Um, so you could do 10 choose 2, 0 0.3 to the 2, 0 0.7 to the 8, and then... <coughs> you could add them up and you get your answer, okay? Likewise, you can use your calculator to do that. But I'm going to show you a quick way to do that in a minute. But that's roughly what's happening. And if we did the same thing here, x is less than 3 for this situation, hopefully, again, we're switching that to a, 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 firm, in a, a firm inequality there where it's inclusive. So less than 3 means, remember, it starts at 0, not 1. It can happen. You can have no successes, right? So one, two, uh, not one, two. So this is x less than or equal to two. So that's probability of x equals zero, x equals one, x equals two. Use your calculator to find each of those. But what if we have p of x is less than or equal to nine? There's another way of looking at that as well, and hopefully you'll see it. I'm not going to do not one, two, three, all the way up to nine. That really is a lot. Can you see that this only goes up to 10, doesn't it? Okay. So if I want 0 to 9, right, all I need to do is subtract the 10th one. So can you see this is the same as 1 minus probability of x equals 10. If I subtract the 10th one, so again, I could quickly use my calculator to do that. So press equals to get back to that menu, the same menu you had. So x is... Uh, 10 this time, you just press equals, so 1 minus 0, 0.0, 0, 0, and it's 6, blimey, to the power of minus 6, so 5, 9, 0, 4, 9, okay, and then you can work that out, which is going to be 0, 0.9999949 uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay, uh, but I want to show you another way of doing this, and this is the last bit of the video, okay? This cumulative idea. So what we've done there are cumulative inequalities because we're adding them up, aren't we? Cumulative means add up as we go. So let's uh, take this random variable here, <coughs> okay? 
So 20 trials this time, and I'm trying to find for part A probability of x less than or equal to 7. So as you know, that's probability of x equals 0 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? That's going to take me a long time. And this is where we're going to use the cumulative bit in your calculator. So this time it's right. So you need to go to your menu, press 7, okay? So menu 7. And then you're going to get a list <clears throat> of 1, 2, 3, 4. So normal PD, normal CD. All you need to do is press down. Press down. So it says tap down. Okay, and you'll see binomial CD, which means cumulative distribution. So if you go back up, number four was PD. That tells you one value. CD will tell you everything from left to the number. Okay, so cumulative. So again, you hit two for variable. And then you've got your list of binomial CD in there. All right. So remember what CD means. CD will give you probability of x equals 0, x equals 1, all the way up to the number that you put in for x. Okay? So it works from left to right, always left to right. And the inequality has to be less than or equals to. Okay? So in my table, I'm going to put x is 7. N is 20, and probability of success is 0.4. So X is uh, 7, 20, 0.4. You should get 0.41589, okay? <clears throat> so normally, probabilities give it to 4 sig fig. So 4159. So check that you can do that, right? Part B. <clears throat> x is less than 6. So again, it has to be inclusive to use the CD thing, right? So that means that 6 is not included. So everything less than 6, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So x less than or equal to 5. So I go to my calculator, just press equals on your calculator, and it'll bring you back to the menu. So instead of 7, I've got 5. <clears throat> so that is 0.4159. You see how quick that is? compared to um, hang on, what's that from there? Oh yeah. Uh, cool. And then I put in five. Yeah, sorry. Whoa, put in the wrong thing. <clears throat> so if I put in five then, so point one two five six. Brilliant. Okay, sorry about that. See how quick that is compared to adding it all up individually. Blimey, imagine add, adding all that up six, seven times. But it's good to know your theory. And like here again, okay, this time it's, you can see the inequality is greater than or equal to. I can't work with it if it's greater than or equal to. Okay, so that was B, this was A, and now we're on C. I can't do anything with that because the inequality is the wrong way, right? So another way of looking at it, again, just quickly listing off the numbers that includes. That's 15, 16, 17, right? All the way up to 20, all the way up to n. So can you see that this is the same as 1 minus the probability of everything that happens before that? So I don't want 14, 13, 12, all the way up to 0, yeah? So x is less than or equal to 14. So I can go 1 minus, right? And then instead of typing in 5, we put in 14 in our thing. So we get 1 minus 0 0.9938847, etc., which will give us 0 0.0016153. Okay, so 4 sig fig uh, 2. All right, so if it's greater than or equal to, we need to switch the inequality round by doing one minus what came before it. And that is the end of the video. Thanks.